Hello there you guys, welcome to one of my videos. So according to Ed Woodward, Manchester United will back Ole Gunnar Solskjaer with a long term plan centred around summer transfer windows. Now Woodward has come out several times to support Ole Gunnar Solskjaer. Now Solskjaer did say that he doesn't expect many ins or outs in the January transfer window. We'll be looking to make quite a few signings next summer. You know, there has been a lot of players on our agenda. You know, Jaden Sancho, he's been one player on our agenda. Jaden Sancho was our number one priority target during the summer transfer window. The main explanation why we didn't get him is because we was refusing to meet Borussia Dortmund's asking price. Dortmund wanted £108 million. We was only willing to pay like 60 or £70 million up front with the rest in add-ons. But it said a few times during the summer transfer window that we had agreed the personal terms and it mentioned that the agent fees and that had been agreed but we couldn't come to an agreement on an actual fee. Dortmund set their deadline during the summer to the 10th of August. We failed to meet that deadline. But you had Michael Zorg, Lucien Favre and Sebastian Kell saying that Sancho would stay at Dortmund which he did. Uh, Fabrizio Romano, he's spoken about the Sancho saga a few times during the summer. Uh, so too did Bill's Christian Fark. Sancho, the other week, made an admission saying it has been hard this season. This is his fourth season with Borussia Dortmund. Dortmund only paid £8 million for him from Man City. He only enjoyed a couple of years at Man City. The main explanation he left City is because he didn't get assured any first team opportunities. And before he was at City, he was at Watford. He was at Watford from the age of 7 to the age of 14. Analysing the vast majority of Sancho's career at Dortmund, he's been very consistent. He's under contract with them until 2023. Don't forget we was willing to give him the number 7 shirt. Um, it said a few weeks ago we could go in for him in January, but what reflects on what Solskjaer's recently said, we could wait until next summer. Now, Usman Dembele, you know, he's been another player on our agenda. I think he's one of the alternatives to Sancho. He said the other week, this was stemming from the An Manchester Evening News, saying that Manchester United have deepened their interest in Usman Dembele. He says we're interested in getting him on loan in January, but Barcelona want to get a straight purchase. Usman Dembele has been at Barcelona now for a good three years or so. Barca got him in a deal worth £135 million. Barca paid £90 odd million pounds up front with the rest in add-ons. He's under contract with Barca until 2022. Said a few weeks ago he could be available for £45 million in January. The element of concern about Usman Dembele though is that he's too injury prone. Erling Haaland, you know, we could go in for him next year. I said it was a shame that we missed out on him back in January because he would have been an Ole Gunnar Solskjaer type signing. Solskjaer knows the player well because Solskjaer was the one that gave him his debut at Mulder at just the age of 16. December last year, Ole and Woodward went to Norway to meet up with Erling Haaland. But the reason Haaland didn't come is because of our inconsistency and obviously at that point we didn't have no Champions League football to offer. Dortmund got him. They only paid £17 million for him. You know, he's got a contract with Dortmund till 2024. 
He's been at Dortmund now, is it for a year or almost a year? He does have a £68 million release clause, but that doesn't become active until the summer of 2022. Eduardo Camavinga, now there's been stories coming out about him recently, saying that, you know, Man United are interested in him. He said he's going to be available for around £45 million next year, because he hasn't done well this season with Rennes. At one point, Rennes were demanding around £70 million for the player. He's got 18 months left on his current contract. There's obviously been a few centre-halves on our agenda. Uh, Daya Opiamicano from RB Leipzig. You know, we've been in for him. I think we could go in for him next summer because he will be available for around £36 million. That's when his release clause does become active. When he signed that new deal with Lesbig until 2023, that's when this release clause come into the equation. Kaladu Kulabali, he's been another centre-half on our agenda. We was in for him under Jose Mourinho. Said a few weeks ago that we was interested in David Carmo. You know, we're, we're obviously going to focus on the outgoings though, as well as the incomings, because he's still dead wood at the football club that we need to get rid of. Now, I think the players that will leave... Man United is Jesse Lingard, Phil Jones, Marcus Rojo, Sergio Romero. Sergio Romero is now our third choice goalkeeper. Daniel James could leave because he's actually lost his place in the team, but despite that, he said he still loves it at Manchester United. Paul Pogba, um, he could go next summer. You know, Matic could leave because he's lost his place in the team. Possibly Juan Mata could go. You know, the other week there was rumours of Brandon Williams going out on loan in January because obviously now he's our third choice left back following the arrival of Alex Tellez. Uh, there's obviously been rumours of Dean Henderson going out on loan. But yeah, uh, Solskjaer does deserve more backing at the football club because during the summer transfer window he wasn't backed enough, but None of our managers have been backed enough since Ferguson left. You know, Moyes wasn't backed enough, Van Gaal wasn't backed enough, Mourinho wasn't backed enough, and Solskjaer has not been backed enough. And like I mentioned, the board at the club's been one of the biggest problems for several years. You know, Woodward's been at Manchester United since 2012. The Glazers have been at the club since 2005. Now, Ole Gunnar Solskjaer has big decisions to make during this important week. Now, he's got to make a decision on Anthony Martial. I think Anthony Martial needs to be dropped. He just isn't clinical enough. You know, Anthony Martial had two chances against PSG. One of the chances were a sitter. And he hasn't been in form this season at all. So this season he's failed to replicate what he did last season because last season he scored 23 goals in 48 games. He did well in his debut season under the Louis van Gaal era. Um, he's enjoyed a good five years or so at the football club. Solskjaer was the one that gave Anthony Martial the number nine. When he has been playing recently, he has been playing on that left-hand side. Solskjaer explained why he's been struggling this season prior to the istanbul Basaksehir game. Because of the three-match suspension he had in the Premier League, he did get sent off in our 6-1 defeat to Tottenham. In reality, though, he shouldn't have been sent off. Now, Oli's got a decision to make 
on who's going to replace Fred next week for the game against RB Leipzig. You know, will it be Van der Beek? Will it be Pogba? Will it be Matic? There's a lot of United fans now saying Fred needs to be dropped anyway. Fred got sent off in our 3-1 defeat to PSG because he received two yellow cards. Now, he was lucky not to be sent off in the first half for the headbutt on Paredes. And he got the second yellow for the challenge on Ander Herrera. But Fred actually won the ball. But Fred should, have not, have been, should not have been on the pitch uh, to get sent off. So it was an awful decision by Solskjaer to not take him off at half-time. But Solskjaer admitted to his mistake, you know, he said, you know, maybe he should have taken Fred off. Solskjaer's also got a decision to make for the game against City, which is our next league game after West Ham. You know, will Solskjaer revert to a back three against Manchester City? Because... In a lot of the big games, Oli has gone a lot with the 3-5-2 formation. He's also got to decide on Rashford. Now, Rashford has obviously sustained a shoulder problem. He sustained this in our 3-1 loss to PSG. He had a shoulder problem when we was playing against West Brom as well. He missed one of England's games during the international break due to his shoulder problem. There's reports coming out saying that he is a doubt for the game against West Ham tomorrow. But Solskjaer's come out and said he's hopeful that he will be available for the game against West Ham. You know, Rashford, without him in the team... We would struggle because Rashford does score quite a lot of goals for Man United. He gets good runs in behind. His finishing's good. Rashford's played on the right hand side a couple of times this season, but he seldom plays there. Most of the time, he plays on the left. Um, a couple of times, he has played centrally, but I think in general, he's more effective out wide. Rashford turned 23 a few weeks ago. He's been part of the club for several years. He's been a United player since the age of seven and he's been in our senior squad since 2016. He had an injury last season. He was out with a back injury, so he was out for a few months. So, yeah. Solskjaer has got a goalkeeping dilemma. But I think Solskjaer's already made his decision on De Gea and Dean Henderson. You know, David De Gea is going to remain our number one for this present time. You know, David De Gea, to his credit, has done well this season. You know, there's been quite a lot of games where he's made some very, very good saves. There has been a couple of games, though, where he hasn't really had much to do. He's made over 500 appearances for Man United in all competitions. And this is his 10th season at the club, so he has been a long servant. He came back from a knee injury not so long ago. He did have the scan on his knee. And he looked in discomfort in the 3-1 loss against PSG. These Man United fans saying that it's the right time now to put Dean Henderson as number one. And I think at some point he will become our number one. Uh, Dean Henderson made his Premier League debut last weekend against Southampton when he came on to replace De Gea. Dean Henderson is reliable enough to become our number one because like I've said time and time again, he has now got that experience behind him. You know, he did enjoy two successful loans with Sheffield United. He also had loan spells with Stockport, Grimsby and Shrewsbury before. We got Dean Henderson at the age of 14, so he has been part of the club for several years. During the summer, don't forget he signed a six-year contract with Man United worth 120 grand a week. So there you go. Now, as you all know, a few was it last week? End 
I updated you. Solskjaer was asked about a new contract at Manchester United and he came out and said that a new contract is not his priority at the moment. He said his priority is leading the club to long-term success. I don't think he can guide the club to long-term success. But he did mention that the team are going places under his management. Maybe talks of a new contract could possibly happen at some point next year. It's not assured though that we will extend his stay at the club. Solskjaer thinks more than halfway through his three-year deal. Because uh, he signed a three-year deal when we gave him the job permanently in March last year. By the way, it actually said that the new Brexit rules would have stopped Manchester United appointing Solskjaer in. Now, I don't think he's the right manager for Manchester United. It's because, you know, he's out of his depth. His decision-making worries, worries me as well because in a lot of his games at Man United, he has been tactically naive. But on the other side of things, there's been games where he's showed tactical flexibility. And Oli's just not got that experience as a manager. You know, Man United is the third club in his managerial career. He's gained experience reflecting how long he's been here, but before he came to the club, you know, he was at Mulder. He won a few Norwegian titles at Mould, but they're not a big club. And before Mould, he was at Cardiff, and he enjoyed a very, very short tenure with Cardiff, didn't he? Did Solskjaer. This is his second full season at the football club and like I said, you know, this was always going to be a big season for Solskjaer. And I said, if we could finish in the top four this season and if we could win a trophy, that would represent a very good season for Man United, then that would give us something to build on. There's a good chance we could win the Carabao Cup this season, you know, within the quarterfinals. There's a chance we could win the FA Cup. We've been drawn against Watford in the third round. But we won't win the Premier League and we won't win the Champions League. But Solskjaer failed to rule out a title challenge this season. We have enjoyed some good periods under him, you know. Before the PSG game, we was unbeaten in our last four games in all competitions. We are still unbeaten in our last three league games. You know, went on a 19-game unbeaten run in all competitions last season. We was 14 unbeaten in the league. You know, we've done quite well away from home in the league. We've won our last eight away games in a row. That's we, that's the first time we've done that in our history. We haven't lost away from home in the league since January. So there you go. Our home form is a ruin though. We've only won one game at Old Trafford in the Premier League this season and that was the 1-0 win against West Brom. Two in all competitions. Oh, sorry. Three in all competitions, I think. Because uh, we're beating Le Leipzig at home and Istanbul Basakshi at home. But we have lost four games at Old Trafford this season. So we have been enjoying our worst start at Old Trafford for around 50 years. You know, Ollie has managed over 100 games for Man United in all competitions. He's under contract with the club until 2022. I'm very, very sceptical that he will see out his contract. There has been a lot of talks of Mauricio Pochettino coming in to replace Oli. You know, he has been the favourite, but now I heard he's the favourite to take over at Real Madrid. Pochettino was the favourite to take over at Old Trafford after Jose Mourinho got sacked. Uh, there's been talks a few times of Masmiliano Ligri coming in. A few weeks ago, Julian Nagelsmann was linked with a managerial role at Man United. But to be honest with you, it wouldn't really solve a lot if we did decide to sack Solskjaer. You know... But he has made some good signings since he got appointed in as Man United manager. You know, he's brought around 10 senior players in and he's spent over £200 million. He's enjoyed around four transfer windows at the club. Uh, we've obviously seen a lot of players depart the club since he got recommended in. 
Um, he did well in his first full season last season because obviously he got us qualification for the Champions League. Also got us third and he guided us to three semi-finals. So there is positives to take. You know, Ole is our fourth permanent manager since the Ferguson era. We've seen three managers sat since Ferguson retired and that was Moyes, Louis van Gaal and Jose Mourinho. You know, we've only won three, four trophies since Ferguson left and that was the FA Cup under van Gaal and the Europa League, the League Cup and the Community Shield under Jose Mourinho. That came in Jose Mourinho's first season. We haven't won the Premier League since 2013, so we haven't won that now for like eight years. And, you know, Solskjaer is inheriting a squad that is worth 700 odd million pounds. You know, a lot of this team is Jose Mourinho's. Still a few players here from the Louis van Gaal era. There's only one player here now from the Moyes era and there's only two players here from the Sir Alex Ferguson era. Now, these players at Manchester United this season that have impressed me, like I mentioned, Marcus Rashford, he's impressed me in a lot of games this season. There has been a couple of games where he has looked a bit off the pace. You know, Bruno Fernandes, he's really, really impressed me. Bruno Fernandes is our best player. And he's the best signing we have made since the Sir Alex Ferguson era. He's nearly enjoyed a year now at the football club. He has scored a lot of goals. He's provided assists. He, won, he just recently won Player of the Month for November. He's won it quite a few times. You know, we paid €55 million Euros for him from Sporting Lisbon back in January. And Fernandes is under contract with Man United until 2025. But disregarding Fernandes, we'd be in a much worse position than we are already in. Uh, Edison Cavani, I've got to say, I've been very, very impressed with him. He's enjoyed a fantastic start to his Man United career. You know, Cavani was unlucky not to score against PSG because he hit the crossbar. He scored two goals against Southampton last weekend, came off the bench. Um, he also got an assist. He did well against Basaccia. He did well when he came on against West Brom. He scored his first goal for the club in our 3-1 win against Everton. And he almost scored with his first touch when he came on against Chelsea. You know the news on Edison Cavani. He's facing a three-match ban. That's minimum. For the social, for the racist comment that he put on social media, the FA have been investigating this social media post. I don't think the FA have yet made a decision on what's going to happen. Uh, Solskjaer came out prior to the PSG game saying that you know Edison Cavani has apologised for what he's done, but Solskjaer said he supports the FA for investigating. You know, the social media post, Edison Cavani actually deleted it. But yeah, I've been very, very impressed with him. And I did say when we got him in, he will be the next Slatan Ibrahimovic. Uh, Donny van der Beek, he's really, really impressed me in the games he's played in. You know, van der Beek didn't start against PSG, but he came on. He weren't great when he came on against PSG. He should have started... Um, he made his first start in the Premier League last weekend against Southampton. I thought he was quite good. I like the way he wins the ball back. He shows good attacking intent. He gets in good positions. We have been playing him, playing him in that deeper role, but that's where he's more effective. He can play in like three different roles. Uh, he can play in number 10 and you can also put him out wide. But Donny van der Beek doesn't mind what position he plays in as long as he can help the team win. You know, we did pay £40 million for him from Ajax. But he says he's he's, he's denied uh, being unhappy at the club. You know, he's he has been patient, you know, waiting for his opportunities. Fred's impressed me in quite a few games this season, but there's also been games where he's disappointed me. 
you know, Fred's been at the club now for a few years. We paid £47 million for him from Shap to the Nesk a few years ago. He endured a difficult time under the Jose Mourinho era, didn't he? Uh, Alex Tellez, now he's really, really impressed me as well. He's enjoyed a good start to his Man United career. Telez was quite good against PSG. Defensively weren't brilliant, but he got forward well. He got in some decent positions and put some good crosses into the box. We got Telez in a deal worth 15.4 million with add-ons included. Don't forget, he did have COVID at one point. He's our first choice left back. Luke Shaw impressed me before he sustained that hamstring injury. Because in his last two games he did play him before he got the injury here and he got two assists. But so my only element of concern about Luke Shaw is that he's far too injury prone. But he's enjoyed a pretty good career at Man United apart from obviously the injuries that he's had. Harry Maguire, now, he's impressed me in quite a few games this season, but there's obviously been games where he hasn't been so consistent. You know, he weren't that good against PSG, let's be honest. He looked all over the place at the back. Uh, like I mentioned, he'd have early season troubles. Harry Maguire is our current captain, and he's the most expensive centre-half in the world at the moment because we got him in a deal worth £80 million. My element of concern about him is that he's too slow, isn't he? And um, we did overpay for him. £80 million pounds is far too much for him, you know. Should have paid like 40 or £50 million for him. That's what he was worth. And Wan Bissaka, now I've got to say, he's uh, been very, very impressive this season. You know, in the games he's played well and he's shown good attacking intent. You know, his defensive contribution's been good. But that's more or less been good anyway, his defensive contribution. Um, he's got in good positions, he's put some good crosses into the box. This is Anwan Bissaka's second season at Man United. Um, he scored one goal for the club and that was the 4-1 win against Newcastle earlier on in the season, wasn't it? Still got element of concerns about Anwan Bissaka though, about his lack of attacking intent and his distribution. Uh, David De Gea, he's also really, really impressed me as well. You know, there's obviously players I have been disappointed with. I've uh, been disappointed with Daniel James. You know, he's been out of form and now his appearances are limited. Um, I've been disappointed with Nemanja Matic. He's lost his place in the team. The only reason he was playing a lot recently is because Pogba wasn't available and Matomwe had a knock. Matic has enjoyed a good three years or so at the club. We got him in a deal worth £40 million from Chelsea back in 2017. Lindelof, he's disappointed me in quite a few games this season. I've got reservations about him. He's too slow, too pre predictable. You know, Lindelof's enjoyed a good three years or so at Manchester United. Pogba, he's also been very, very disappointing. Like I said, I'm expecting Paul Pogba to leave next year. Uh, Pogba didn't start against PSG, but he did come on. I think we look better without Paul Pogba in the team, to be fair. He missed our last three games prior to the PSG game with an ankle injury. The ankle injury was totally contrast to the one last season, like Oli confirmed not so long ago. You know, Paul Pogba has had a long-running transfer saga. You know, Lingard was disappointing when obviously he was playing regularly in the team because there was a period where he didn't score a goal or an assist in the league for over a year. Jones has been very, very inconsistent since he came in. We got him under the Alex Ferguson era. And as for Marcus Rojo, he's never really established himself as a first-team regular, has he? Um, for Kondo Palistri... Solskjaer's got to make a decision on him. You know, he's not yet played in the first team, but he has been playing for the under-23s. Uh, we got Facundo Pellistri for £9 million from Peniril. Uh, I think we're expecting a Mad Traore to be joining the football club in January. So there you go. But I think we've now only got two injuries. Uh, Luke Shaw's still out, I think. Uh, Jones has been injured. 
Yeah, with it, back to Luke Shaw. He's close to coming back now. Um, that's it. Axel to Anzebe, he's available again because he didn't play any part against PSG because he was out with suspension. So anyway, on my next video, I'll be giving you my reaction to Ole Gunnar Solskjaer's press conference ahead of the game against PSG, ahead of the game against West Ham, sorry. So anyway, guys, that's everything to update today. Drop your comments, likes below on the channel. If you do, consider subscribe as always and take care. God bless. See you all again very, very soon.